students today i welcome you in the session of physics in which we will take today the, the chapter which is known as magnet so a magnet is an object which attract things made of iron steel nickel and cobalt as you can see here we will take a magnet this is the uh, diagram of magnet 6.1 here you can see okay so magnet is an object which attract things like made of iron steel nickel and cobalt figure 6.1 as you can see in your book shows that a magnet attract a piece of papers clips and screw made of iron or steel i hope it is clear for you what is magnet a magnet is an or, uh, thing or object which attract lighter particles or like uh, things iron steel and nickel toward itself so magnet are made of iron steel or other alloy of iron by the process of magnetization how magnets are made the magnet are made of iron steel or other alloy of iron by the process of magnetization magnet made in this way are called artificial magnet so if we made magnets like iron through iron steel or other alloy by the process of magnetization then that magnets are known as artificial magnets here you can see it is written here which means that man made magnets those magnets which we are designed through the alloy are known as man made magnets magnets are made in different shape and sizes so they can be used for different purposes one of the most common shape is the bar magnet the most common shape of the magnet is known as bar magnet which has south and north poles a bar magnet is a long rectangular shape is a bar of iron or steel some other type of magnets are horseshoe magnet u shaped magnets cylindrical magnets button magnet and ring magnets these are the types of magnet as you can see here this is the shape of bar magnet where a south and a north pole exist the second one is the u shaped magnet the third one is the horseshoe magnet the fourth is a cylindrical magnet the fifth one is the button magnet and the last one is the ring magnet i hope it is clear for you so now we will move to the next topic how magnet were discovered so as you can see there is an old story that magnet were discovered by chance by an old shepherd named magnes who lived in ancient greece what the story tells us there is an old shepherd whose name was magnes who lived in ancient greece he always took a wooden stick with him to manage his herd of sheep and goats what is his work he uh, he take a stick which will manage the uh, herd of sheep and goats the wooden stick had an iron casing at its lower end one day magnes suddenly felt that something was pulling his stick away from him and that the, the stick that is taken by the magnes uh, at the, the lower end of that stick there is a casing of which material iron on one day magnes suddenly felt that something was pulling his stick away from him it appears as if the iron covered end of the stick was being attracted by a rock and got stuck to the rock so magnus had pulled hard to free the iron end of the stick from the rock what did magnus do he pulled his stick from the uh, from the uh, rock actually the rock was a natural magnet now what the rock is rock was a natural magnet which attracted the iron end of the magnus stick which is attracting the stick taken by the magnus this rock which behave like a magnet was given the name magnetite so the rock which behave like a magnet given the name as magnetite magnetite rock contain iron magnetite rock contains what materials name iron so magnets were named so after the name of the shepherd magnus that's the name originate from the name of the shepherd whose name was magnus some people however believe that the natural magnet called magnetite but some people believes that the natural magnet is known as magnetite was first discovered a place in magnesia in turkey means but 
some people they have different different views about the <coughs> name of the mag, uh, iron or magnes magnetite so some uh, they give the discovered at the place magnesia in turkey the magnetite attract piece of iron toward itself and what the property of the magnetite it attract the pieces of iron toward itself and when a thin strip of magnetite is suspended from a thread so that it could rotate freely and if we suspend the stick of a, or a strip of magnetite by a, the, with the help of thread it rotate freely the magnetite strip always align itself in the same direction that is north south direction uh, what does it mean if you suspend a magnetite strip uh, by attaching a thread in the middle and hang it through a point then it always rest in which position it rest in a north south position that is the thing it is written here one end of the freely suspended magnetite strip always point toward the north direction due to this property the freely suspended magnetite strip were used by sailor in the ship to find the direction in old time so with the help of this magnetite strip uh, in olden times the sailors used this strip to find out the direction because they always pointed in the north south direction so with the help of this stick they find out the where is the north direction and what is the south direction as it is written here since magnetite was used to find direction to lead the way for ships it was also called lodestone so it is also known as lodestone which means leading stone the pieces of magnetite rocks are known as natural magnets and the piece of magnetite rocks are known as natural magnet i hope it is clear for you okay so now we will take what are the magnetic and non magnetic materials here we will study the magnetic and non magnetic material from the above activity we concluded that some material or object are attracted by a magnet whereas other material or object are not what does it mean means if you put a magnet close to some <coughs> objects they will either attract toward the magnet or they repel to uh, against our against the magnets so, so on the basis of their behavior towards a magnet all the material can be divided into two groups so material can be divided in two groups by the nature of the material they are known as magnetic material and non magnetic material so now we will discuss about the magnetic material and non magnetic material the material which are attracted by magnet as you can see it is written here the materials which are attracted by a magnet are called magnetic materials like iron steel nickel and cobalt and the object made of iron steel like nails paper clips swing needles hair pins paper pins drawing pins safety pins knife blade scissors spade blade etc are attracted by a magnet these are the things you can see in your daily life and in household also the material which are not attracted by a magnet there is a second point which are not attracted by a materials uh, those materials are called non magnetic material all the materials other than iron steel nickel and cobalt are non magnetic magnetic materials so those materials other like uh, leaving the iron steel and nickel cobalt are non magnetic material for example like if you take wood plastic rubber paper cloth glass leather thermocol copper aluminum brass lead stone diamond graphite paint charcoal air water skin and bones etc they are all non magnetic material so why because they didn't attract towards the magnet if we put close to the magnet it is also written here the object made of non magnetic material are also non magnetic in nature thus a wooden spoon a plastic scale pencil rubber eraser copper wire aluminum brass a book at leather shoes wood shaving etc are non magnetic object so you can tell easily what are the magnetic and what are non magnetic materials i hope it is clear fine now we will move to types of material this is given here as we already discussed what are magnetic and non magnetic material so such as iron cobalt nickel are known as magnetic material and other than leaving iron steel cobalt nickel those materials are known as non magnetic material 
now we will come to what are the poles of a magnet <clears throat> so if a bar magnet is put in a heap of iron filling heap iron filling means if a bulk of iron fillings the maximum amount of iron filling cling to the ends of the bar magnet so what are the poles here we will discuss what are the poles of the magnet as we will discuss earlier a bar magnet has two poles one is north pole and the other one is south pole so if a bar magnet is put in a heap of iron filling the maximum amount of iron filling clings to the ends of the bar magnet so what uh, this experiment tells us that the maximum amount of magnetism arises at the poles of the magnet this shows that the force of attraction of the magnet is st strongest near the two ends of the bar magnet these are called the poles of the magnet so if the question comes what where the strength of the magnetism is maximum so you can write that at the poles of the magnet thus the region of the magnet where the attraction is the strongest are called the poles of the magnet it is written here the region of the magnet where the attraction is the strongest are called poles of the magnet hope i hope it is clear a magnet has always two poles whatever its shape may be means whatever shape you design the magnet it always exists with two poles one is the south pole and the other one is the north pole one pole of the magnet is called north pole and the other pole is called the south pole the north pole of a magnet is represented by letter writing lap, letter capital n near its one end and the other one is known as south pole writing its as capital s near its other end so now we will come to what are the properties of the magnet as you can see we will discuss about the properties of the magnet so the properties of the magnet are a freely suspended magnet always point in the now south direction this is the directive property of magnet as i told you earlier if we hang a uh, magnet with the help of a thread then it always rest in the north south direction so a freely suspended magnet as you can see in the figure given in your book here 6.4 if a freely suspended magnet is hang <coughs> through a thread then it always comes to rest always in the north south direction figure this 6.4 shows a bar magnet suspended from a thread which is tied to a wooden stand we call it a freely suspended magnet because it is free to move in any direction why we call it is a freely suspended because this magnet is totally free to move in any desired direction but it always just in the which direction north south direction the thread thread does not prevent it from swinging in any direction let us now turn the magnet by hand so that it point in another direction and leave it now we will change the direction of the magnet and leave it we will see that after a while the magnet come to its earlier position which is what position north south direction so here the end points of the magnet that point toward the north is called the north pole and the point which is and uh, directed toward the south is known as south pole that is written here here you can see that the most useful application of directive property of magnet is the magnetic compass now here you can see that this is the uh, figure of magnetic compass 6.5 <clears throat> property of magnet is magnetic compass in 11th century chinese discovered that a magnet can act as a compass to find the direction on the surface of the earth on the surface of the earth so with the help of this magnetic compass we find the direction on the surface of the earth which that is which is uh, which direction is known as north which is south which is east which is west marnier compass is more elaborate form of the pocket compass there is a different different types of compass also exist so here marnier compass is more elaborate form of the pocket compass now we will come to what are the attractive property of magnet here you can see it is written here a magnet always attract magnetic material toward it this is called attractive property of a magnet so a magnet attract the uh, materials towards it is known as attractive property of magnet i hope you understand now we will come to like pole ripple and unlike poles attract each other of a magnet 
as you can see here if we bring the north pole of a magnet near the north pole here are the different different diagrams figure 1 figure 2 figure 3 so if we bring the north pole of a magnet near the north pole of a freely suspended magnet the poles of the magnet ripple but if we bring the north pole of north pole of a magnet towards the south pole then they attract so it is clear from this figure that the north pole uh, same pole like uh, ripple each other and opposite poles attract each other one more thing we will discuss at, uh, at the end poles exist always in pairs what does it mean if we take a bar magnet that it consists of two poles that is one is north, south pole and the other one is north pole so if we take a bar magnet and cut into two pieces the two new magnet will have their own north and south poles as you can see here these are the three diagrams one and this is second and this is your. so if a bar magnet and cut into two pieces the two new magnet will have their own south and own north as you can see in figure number two we divide the uh, above first one into two pieces then it always exists in two pairs one is south and the other one is north if we further divide these two smaller magnets these four new magnets you can see in figure third here so if now we further divided the second one into how many parts four parts then it always also exists in uh, south north south north south north south north so a magnet always has two opposite pole it is important to note that we can never isolate the north pole of a bar magnet from its south pole this is the most important point we can never isolate a north pole of a bar magnet from a south pole magnetic poles always exist in pair i hope it is clear and that's all for today's